Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome from Le Bureau Export Centre National de la Musique. I am Françoise Claire. I'm the head of classical and jazz music for this uh, organization. And um, for the last panel of the year, we have dedicated the theme to a crucial Good morning, subject. everyone. A very Which warm is... welcome from Le Bureau Export Centre National de la Musique. I am Françoise. Sorry. Sorry, a little technical uh, issue. Um, so yes, we are dedicating the last panel of the year to the very uh, crucial subject, uh, which is sustainability. And we have an amazing panel of guests. Uh, Eric will introduce them, them in, a, in a second. And um, as I said last week, we are delighted that this series will continue in 2021. Uh, we are working on uh, the subject, but for today, as we talk about uh, the Earth and the consequences of touring on the planet, um, I have this beautiful wallpaper behind me with parrots, and um, we can keep an eye on that. So, Eric, for you to deal with the subject. Thank you and enjoy. Thanks, Francois, and sorry for that quite minimalist wallpaper behind me. Um, so, uh, when we, um, welcome also to everybody, to our panel members. They will be joined by Nikolaus Pound, the head of um, Symphony Orchestra des Bayerischen Rundfunks. Uh, quite soon, he has been uh, obliged to, to follow um, a meeting. He'll be joining us probably in three quarter hours or one hour. And since, um, as you have all noticed, we are living definitely in very uncertain times. We've got to apologize, Michael Hefflinger, uh, whose office communicated yesterday with the fact that he is unfortunately uh, not uh, with us, as you can see. So it will be joining probably another panel next year. Um, so thanks so much, um, Celine, Scott, Rafi, to be with us. Uh, Celine, let's start with uh, Lady Celine, is the uh, vice president of Profedim, the uh, French Independent Ensemble Trade Union, Professional Union. Uh, Celine is also the administrative director of Correspondance, the early music uh, ensemble, led by uh, Sébastien Dosset, quite famous for his uh, 16th century interpretations of French music, among others. And Celine is co-founder of uh, Art Viva, uh, a French association dedicated to sustainability topics. Hello, Celine. Uh, Scott, Scott is the head of development of Scottish Ensemble, um, but Scott is also a member of the ABO, Association of British Orchestras, and is a leading uh, a group, uh, um, an intelligent collective group dedicated to sustainability in, in Scotland. Hi. Hi, Eric. Thanks for having me. Rafi is a famous figure in our classical music world. He is a board member of Harrison Parrot in London which I don't need to present, and is also the head of the touring department. Uh, Harrison Pratt is one of the leading agencies um, in the world, obviously, and is also leading in managing tours for the best brands uh, in the world. It's uh, such an honor having you now on board, Rafi. Um, I will start with Celine, maybe a very um, broad um, question, if you um, um, allow me. Um, um, so pro probably um, we need we need to precise a little bit for our audience um, what is Arviva? Why do you want to, to create with some other professionals um, this association? What it is about, and why do you consider sustainability as being one of the key issues for industries in industry in the in the present? Thank you, Eric. Um, well, uh, Arviva started in, in June this year, so this is very uh, recent association, but uh, already very effective <laughs> one. Um, it's interesting because we, we it's funny because we, we, we met last year uh, at the Philharmonie um, for um, a professional network for the, 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 the ensemble in music. Um, and, uh, and it was very difficult to promote this uh, theme uh, one year and a half ago. So I'm really glad uh, to, to be part of this encounter. <laughs> Counter today because I, I see this uh, kind of topics as uh, part of our normal uh, discussion, uh, professional discussion today. So I think this is already one uh, uh, small victory, maybe, <laughs> uh, to highlight. Um, 
So yes, at Arviva, uh, the, 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 the principal goal was to say, uh, uh, alone we cannot do uh, anything. Uh, we see that our, um, all our organization, uh, ensemble, orchestras, uh, but also uh, dance, uh, circus and uh, theater, because at Arviva we gather all the, all the performing arts. Um, um, well, our um, efforts uh, for sustainability uh, is re rely really on uh, individuals and we cannot uh, anymore uh, uh, move forward in this in this direction we, we have to um, have collective uh, impulse um, so at Arviva we wanted really to promote sustainability as innovation and this is uh, interesting that um, in every other economical field uh, sustainability is sees like is seen like um, innovation like uh, improvement and in the um, in the cultural field, it's not uh, it's not really seen as a, an innovation, and we, we are strongly um, convinced that uh, indeed uh, changing the way of uh, producing, of creating, of touring, of uh, thinking your organization, it's strongly linked to innovation. So why can't we really? Uh, think the, 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 the sustainability uh, topic as a, a strong innovation. Um, so we, we decided to found uh, Arviva um, in this uh, way of uh, promoting uh, sustainability, like a really strong and positive added value to our sector. And this is really interesting to see that our our field is is really lagging on this on this uh, on this matter, because I think the symbolic value we create uh, was uh, was really strong and we exempted ourselves to think uh, sustainability. But now I think that the, the, the things are, are really changing. Uh, the consumer and the audience, I think they, they are really changing, um, changing also the, um, the, 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 the vision. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see that the, the consumer in everyday life uh, is asking himself if he has to uh, buy this item. Uh, so uh, it, when it turns to food, uh, to all the goods of everyday life, to fashion, uh, you wonder about uh, the carbon print of your item, but uh, why in cultural uh, field uh, you, cannot, you, you, you cannot bring this, this topic. But I think it, it will change and this is the work of our Arviva. And um, the, 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 net, the, the association, the network, um, has come to life to really uh, give some tools, practical tools, uh, to to the to the organization um, to accompany uh, the, the the organization uh, in uh, sustainability, which uh, uh, means more time, more money, uh, more intelligence and collective intelligence, um, and it uh, it has really the the goal to um, to rise uh, to to raise uh, awareness also. Um, in the the public uh, policies, we wanted to really change the the, the vision of sustainability in, in the in the cultural field, um, promoting uh, the, this this um, this notion of innovation also with uh, a price. Um, we the, there is no uh, price existing in uh, in the cultural field in uh, France. I'm in, in the UK, for example, the, you have Julie's uh, bicycle, which is really really active in this uh, in this uh, in this field. In France, it's I think we are very, very late in France. So um, Arviva has uh, all this mission together um, to 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 move forward in this uh, on this topic. Great, great, thank you. So we come later to uh, that point, um, which kind of innovative steps can be um, taken. Um, thanks so much, Celine. Um, Scott, when uh, did um, you ensemble? And, and more globally, um, Scottish colleagues and the ABO in the UK uh, start thinking about sustainability as, as, a, as a key issue. Yeah, great question, Eric. Um, it's been on the radar for a number of years now. Uh, in 2011, the Association of British Orchestras with Julie's Bicycle, the organisation Celine mentioned, produced its first Green Orchestra's Guide. But in Scotland, more locally, one of the key catalysts for this is that Creative Scotland, which is the main funder for cultural work in Scotland, in 2016 stipulated that if you receive regular funding from Creative Scotland, you must measure your carbon footprint. So that was when Scottish Ensemble began doing so. Just for a bit of context, Scottish Ensemble was founded in 1969 with a string orchestra that's based in Glasgow in Scotland. Uh, these days we're comprised of 12 musicians, so it's a smaller chamber group, which as I'm sure will come on to, makes it easier for us to make change. Um, but this 2016 was the first year that we started engaging with these things. And 
it's interesting to hear Celine's experiences. What I would say is having that impetus from uh, an almost governmental body created quite a rapid shift in our sector. So perhaps like Arviva, there is an organisation in Scotland called Creative Carbon Scotland, a bit like Julie's Bicycle, which exists at the intersection of culture, uh, science and uh, as, a, as a funding stream. And so each year now, since 2016, Scottish Ensemble has reported on all of the emissions from all of the journeys that it's taken. We make estimates as to the power use in our buildings. Uh, and we've also been obliged to make a carbon management plan from 2018 onwards. So uh, e even having this impetus externally is really what allowed us as a, an organisation to begin to work internally. So uh, alongside all of that, we've also now got our own sustainability policy, as I know many of the other organisations will. And we found having this community that was made for us in many ways has helped speed things along. But I would say in line with what Celine says, actually the classical field, as opposed to say theatre or the visual arts has in many ways lagged behind in its engagement with these topics. Um, it's interesting to hear that's the case in so many different countries. Maybe we can talk about why we think that is. Um, and so it was really in 2019 and 2020 that the Scottish Classical Sustainability Group was founded. This is something I'm a member of that's got about 20 organisations across Scotland, the various national companies, classical music, opera, as well as amateur groups and freelancers, because we think it's really important to include those different parts of society, since, as Celine says, it affects us all. So that's hopefully a little introduction to Fantastic. the journey. No. Right, so it was quite a very short trip. So starting 2012, 11, up to now, this is less than a decade. Uh, in that, thanks so much, Scott. Thanks so much. Uh, in that trip, um, Rafi, um, for sure, uh, Jasper Pirate's article in the Guardian a year ago was a very important milestone. We uh, do all uh, remind it um, as, as something we found profoundly uh, um, not surprising, but at least. Um, for the very first time, I think a major, uh, most major figure in the classical music world took um, responsibility and initiative. So please tell us, uh, when did it start, that consciousness, awareness within the agency? Um, so what is, what is the, 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 the history of, of taking care of these, of these topics um, within HP? Hello everyone. Um, actually, uh, this started quite a few years ago, and um, and it's been uh, going around in our company for quite uh, some time. Um, you are indeed right. What Jasper wrote uh, in the in the Guardian was a very important milestone. Uh, but and uh, if anybody hasn't read it, I really strongly recommend it. Um, but also, I, I just wanted to say it was quite. It's an op-ed. So anybody can write that in The Guardian. In, in some ways, um, it's amazing to see how by being, by, by being active, entrepreneurial, and uh, uh, you, you can really do some change. We, can, we really have a strong voice that we can use. Um, and it's not that difficult. Uh, we can write in different blogs or different um, newspapers, different articles. So I think um, we shouldn't underestimate the power we all have individually. And I think that is something, a message I would like to give to everybody. Because um, um, in fact, when you look back a few years, uh, we as artist managers company, we have a very big roster with artists all around the world. Me within my department, I, uh, uh, I'm probably one of the greatest enablers of, uh, of touring, uh, travel, making people travel to all around the world, lots of carbon footprints. So there was, uh, almost a soul searching within us that can we actually do this and can we actually put our mouth uh, put our money where our mouth is if you like and um and in the end we said that's n we uh, that's not an excuse not to do something about it and even when airline companies are doing things for um uh, for the cl uh, for the climate change uh, when they have a sustainability policy we should also have one and uh, and so uh, as a result, we uh, we started to um, um, to ex to to really explore ourselves of who we are, how we pollute, what do we do. So 
as a first step, what we did is um, we have um, we looked in how much we as a company um, how much carbon we produce. So we did a whole research, and I think maybe we can discuss the mechanics a little bit more uh, in a bit. But just briefly, is that we researched ourselves and we. Uh, tried to make ourselves carbon neutral plus. We checked about all our travels. Uh, we checked about in our company, in our office, how much we pollute we as an individual. Um, but but uh, what is important to note is that we all have to be conscious individually, but also as a collective. So that's why, as colleagues said, um, these kind of webinars are very important and we have to speak out because we all have a voice. And um, and in our case, um, with the artists that we represent, the artists are in a very strong position to also lobby different bodies. Um, so um, so right now we are a carbon neutral plus company, uh, meaning that we have, uh, we have carbon offsetting, if you like. And as a next step, what we are doing is uh, speaking out about and giving guidances and consultancy to some organization that wants to um, uh, wants to become carbon neutral. And we're trying to spread it as far and wide as we can. Um, because uh, it's, no, it's not that we, we can certainly show what we have, but it's everybody has to be conscious of what they're doing. I think that's the thing. Wow, well. Super, super. So such a lot have been achieved already within a very short time 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 span. I have the feeling. So let, let's come maybe to so some concrete uh, um, case studies in some in some in some way. P please uh, tell us um, what must be changed in the business as usual practices of our industry. What what has to be changed completely? Um, maybe what should be changed and and what we, we could keep as it is maybe each of you one or two examples in each category that will probably give us already a, a, a spectrum the, the first who wants to answer please go on um. Well, I, I think the, the uh, um, we we have to um, really change the the um, the internationally the international frame um, of music. My purpose is not to say we don't have to travel anymore, but music is relies particularly on um, internationally connected artists we, who are touring um, uh, all over the world. Uh, through the whole year, um, and uh, I think there is something to change um, about this uh, fame and notoriety standards in classical music. It's, it's particularly true in classical music. It's not that true in the other uh, fields of, of performing arts. And um, uh, it's it's funny because notoriety in classical music is very um, often proportional to the long list of uh, international venues uh, you mentioned in your biography as an artist. So you you don't exist as an international artist and a quality artist if you don't have uh, at least twenty or thirty um, uh, venues mentioned in your in, in your biography. So uh, and and I, I speak for myself for correspondence. And, and I remember the, the old biography three three years ago where uh, we, we we listed uh, all the all the international um, and most prestigious uh, concert hall we we've been um, we've been uh, to, to, to perform so uh, and we've been used also to have a one shot uh, uh, tour like in Boston or in in China so so th this is this kind of practice I think we have to um, to interrogate uh, indeed if we don't uh, really rethink this kind of, of frame, uh, I don't think we can really uh, sincerely change uh, or, or practice. And 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 as I said, my purpose is not to say we, we have to all stay at home. Uh, we can uh, tour, but uh, we, we can tour in a respectful way. Uh, and in this uh, in this vision, I think the the um, the international tour must be rarer. There must be longer. Uh, there must be really thought about the the um, the artistic uh, intelligence is is this is it um, really uh, relevant if i am I'm, I'm touring in this country at this moment of the year um, uh, shall i uh, convince maybe uh, more uh, programmers uh, to uh, to program and, and fight against uh, exclusivity uh, terms uh, i think there is a, a lot to do 
uh, in the international system for classical music. So what you are saying, to summarize, under your control, we have to change small a, the mindset, mm -hmm. challenging this linear connection between reputation and list of international venues inviting me as an artist. Mm. So that means this is a common shared mindset, I think, within the industry. So you're, you're telling us maybe that mindset should be changed. Maybe not completely, but at least partly. And the second yeah. thing is we need to change the, the, the math. We need to change the, the geometry with which we, we do We have to change the, the software, indeed. Of, uh, we change the, change the software. So that, that means, for instance, let's take Paris, which is the, uh, the capital not only of France, but also of exclusivity. Let's, let's, let's have people take, taking, taking seriously the fact that when Rafi is touring uh, uh, a major orchestra from the States or from Asia or that's, sorry, in English, plain English, that's bullshit having them only for one evening at Philharmonie de Paris or Théâtre Champs-Élysées. And um, they, can, they can go to both venues and we should definitely find ways maybe to have these 120 plus uh, fantastic people coming once every two years or three years in Paris to stay a little bit longer. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I think we, we, okay. we have to get used to, uh, to rarity indeed. I think this is the main word in the world in, a, in, a, in our in the new world we want to build. Yes, uh, I think um, ephemere and rarity uh, uh, must be new uh, new habits uh, also for the audience. And it gives, I think, more value also to the artist when you have the chance to see uh, one artist maybe uh, one once every two, three, four years. Um, uh, I think it gives it, it, it gives more importance and, and, and artistic value also to the work you are you, you are touring. And this is really the, the thing I'm, I'm, I'm trying to discuss with the programmers and, 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 right. and it is difficult uh, when you say to uh, particularly, for example, in the in the US uh, uh, where they are used to say, okay, no, I'm not programming uh, with uh, Washington. So uh, please come back next year. No, uh, indeed, when, when we will come back, it, it will be in, uh, within five years. So it's now or it's in five years, uh, nice. and and I I think the the well the practices as I used to have in correspondence I can't uh, consider it anymore today, and this is a good point. It's it's going fast. I think and and the audience also uh, I think will will consider this criterion as a choice also for their cultural uh, activity. Uh, very very soon. It is not the case now. I'm I'm not saying it is it, it is the case now, but I think in the, in, a, in the near future it will be. So making out of our artists and products um, uh, democratic and publicly subsidized luxury goods in some way. Um, who wants to complete, not the challenge, maybe Celine's point of view, but complete and then when we, we come to the details. Scott, please. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, I can build upon what Celine says. Maybe I agree very much with her perspective and it's great to hear. Um, there's, there's two examples that I'll give. Maybe one is practical and one is a, a bigger thought. So I would agree with Celine that a, a re-evaluation of the culture needs to happen. I think we have to have new new metrics for how we value success. And as Celine says, at the moment, this is often to do with international travel and the places you have been. And I think we need to come up with new ways of evaluating that, which can solve some of classical music's other problems, you know, can success instead be a deeper engagement with a local community? Uh, that's not something that's particularly valued at the moment, although it's something that's talked about quite a lot. So I think that's a good example of how you can kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. I would also say on that point of reviewing the wider culture, there needs to be a financial point there as well, because I know currently a lot of orchestras and ensembles will often take international work purely for the higher fees that it can pay. And so their business models just now are based around taking those opportunities, which as well as giving them glamour, <laughs> also gives them much needed funds that they can then underwrite the rest of their work with. And I, I suppose I would say that organisations need to be very cautious about continuing with that business model going forward in a world where international touring is going to become more difficult and costly. Uh, from a financial sustainability point of view, I think everyone needs to sit up and take notice of that. And the second point that I wanted to make uh, when you ask Derek, what, what needs to change? What should we change? In some ways, I would say each organization should try and review that for themselves because it will. there are some things we can agree on, like flights being very damaging. 
but I would encourage each organisation to get to grips with its own carbon footprint, as R Rafi experienced. In Scottish Ensemble for the past five years, we've measured our footprint, and we now know that every year, international touring alone accounts for between 88 and 92 percent of our entire carbon footprint. For context, we'll give about 100 performances per year, but maybe only two or three international tours. So to show the disparity in how much our whole domestic touring programme and our office, that's about 5%, and international touring is about 95%. However, if you own a building or a concert hall, in fact, it may be things like upgrading your building, replacing your energy, that's more important for you. So I would encourage people to get to grips with it on an individual basis as well. I understand. But what you say, Scott, under your control, you are agreeing with Celine's points. Very important points she, she, she put there. And you were saying on the top, there is a problem, there is an opportunity cost. When Once you are traveling around, you're not taking care of your community. And that should be also part of the metrics of the values we are counting as a successful artist in the 21st century. That's what you say. And then you also say, OK, if we really internalize all the negative externalities of uh, a very high carbon footprint because of, 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 of traveling too much or insanely, um, that means the business models are not sustainable. Um, and that means the public funders may notice it. And in the long term, it's it's morbid. Yeah, that's OK. Exactly. So we, we have a very strong uh, already. We have four or five very strong points, which may definitely impact the major London or New York based or Berlin based um, classical music agencies. And we have to deal with an ecosystem, of course, because we also have to deal with human talent, which is not always locally available, I must say, at the level we are expecting i'm not sure everyone in scotland let's take scotland could manage to perform 17th century french music despite the close link between scotland and france at that time I wish uh, as as as, as uh, celine's band is doing so that's just to take that issue rafi up to you um i mean this is a very uh, big question eric and um I could spend hours talking about this, actually, because there is so much that could and should change, actually. But one thing I want to um, recommend everybody and listeners to um, to really watch David Attenborough's last uh, documentary called Life on Our Planet. And it just shows fantastically what has happened in the last through his lifetime, in his 80 years, 90 years, and how much the population has grown, how much biodiversity has been lost, how much... Uh, how how we destroyed our planet and it shows it in such a wonderful way that anybody that watches that um, will for sure be interested in what can be done because uh, it's a very good documentary and everybody should watch it the um, uh, you know just on a general thing what David Attenborough says at the end uh, is uh, one is that we should all change our diet uh, because uh, the great uh, with the great grazing of cows and and meat is not a very good thing and the second year we shouldn't have we shouldn't have kids so <laughs> and, and that's uh, his solution oh, that, that, that's a lot that's, that's a lot, that's as, a lot. As, a, as a father with, as, and grandson of an Italian butcher I, must, <laughs> I admire David but I won't be agreeing with all of these points. so if we re and and then we should um, I mean uh, there is other things like palm oil because the palm oil that we use all in our cookings and so on, and almost everything we eat is destroying all of the rainforests around the world. So if you look at it from a very global point, these are the three things that we really should change according to David Attenborough. Of course, we cannot, um, uh, we, we, should, uh, we should support that as much as we can, uh, but we have to look at ourselves and what we are doing. So, um, so it's very so. Just a very small thing is um, uh, in terms of. I think there's many, many organizations that doesn't have a sustainability policy. I mean, that's a very simple thing to uh, to do. It, we all should uh, have our own sustain sustainability policies uh, in as many countries as we can, and we should share these amongst each other. And that comes with, I think my first thing is the education. And uh, that's not only, um, and it, it, it can be bottom up or top down, but I think it has to start somewhere. And that's not necessarily for um, 
uh, for venues or um, artists, but it can be also for conservatoires, music schools. Um, it's in every part of our society that touches it because the uh, most of uh, the managers, we're looking at, let's say, a long term at the moment. So if we, we have to educate we have to be. Uh, we have to show what's happening out there and in, embedded within our educational systems in our music world because they will be the musicians, um, the the managers of the future, um, and that's, I think, a key that it has to be in each uh, educational body. Um, there, there, and uh, and of course the platforms of our venues can be used for this too, uh, for these kind of subjects. I think. Um, the other thing just tied up to that is uh, leadership, uh, is that uh, we shouldn't uh, be um, apathetic or complacent. Um, we should um, look all ourselves, um, what can we do with, uh, with the current situ situation we're facing? Because each um, organization has different um, uh, ideas. And after all, we are in the world of ideas and uh, creativity. And I'm sure we can come up with many ideas that can actually help um, our industry, but the society at large as well. And uh, and um, alongside this, we should um, be tenacious. We shouldn't give up because most of the time what happens is that uh, there is like a subject that comes and suddenly there is another subject that comes and then we forget about it or people just put it on the back burner. And uh, it's important to keep this agenda at the top of what we are doing and, uh, and that it trickles down because, uh, uh, because if we forget it, then, you know, it's, uh, it's doomed for all of us. I think um, in terms of the um, uh, artists, um, uh, artists, artist managers, and actually everybody really has a, has a position to um, how can we use art uh, to inform people as much as possible can we include it in our in our seasons can we can we with our power even when our artists are traveling can we notice that there isn't a sustainability policy here can we talk about it can we speak about it can we influence can we lobby the government um and uh, and that's uh, very important um and i know already lots of artists many artists are doing um um, a lot of projects connected with climate change and what can we do so that so that our publics are um, are informed. Uh, I, for, for example, we as an artist manager, we are working on a lot of sim such projects at the moment uh, where we um, where we promote and we hope that the promoters would be interested in that so that the public will be um, also much more inspired to do more. Because if you think about it, even though uh, classical music, um, whatever people say, we can we are reaching a lot of people out there in all over the world, and collectively we have a lot of power that to inspire uh, public and audiences. And we don't know how that will trickle out in the long term. Um, okay, I think yeah. Thanks. No, uh, there, no, 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 uh, <laughs> there will be a lot to discuss on this inspirational force. Th th thank you, Rafi. If I understand you well, you were telling us, okay, you agree also with Celine's and Scott points. Oh, uh, totally. You say we have to introduce a sustainability yeah. policy. Yeah. We, uh, we, 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 we come back. We come back. Uh, but you also say we are a media. I mean, as a force, we have the artists, we have the ambassadors for this. Yeah. So do not let only scientists or sport people or whatsoever talk yeah. about that, or politicians. We can also, as individuals, I connect to the first thing you were telling us 30 minutes yeah. ago, as individuals, we can make a difference. Absolutely. And um, uh, later on, I can talk about more specifically, um, maybe some specific yeah. ideas as well. We should. We should. We should. We should. So uh, our, our listeners, we have a, a, a great deal of things to do today afternoon or evening. They have to watch movie now. And I will give them also, we will give them two documents to read. Um, um, from the ABO, under Scott Control again, there is a Green Orchestra's Guide, which uh, is introducing the following terms, which Rafi would, would have probably signed, like demonstrating leadership on these sustainability issues is increasingly important in sustaining a vibrant organizational culture and relationship with our audiences. So that's pretty much what you said. 
Rafi. And I think uh, this is now a common ideology, so to say, and philosophy. And this is, this is um, uh, important. And in the Green's Orchestra Guide, if you read it, there is very, very uh, 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 many good uh, practices to introduce into organizations. It has been worked out with a lot of details. I can only recommend. And we, we come up to some of these a little bit later on. And by Arviva, Céline's um, uh, um, uh, organization she has co-founded, there is a, um, a draft a white paper called Pour une écologie de la musique vivante, for a ecology of, the, of performing or living music, and, and which says pretty much the same, more or less. Um, in a French idiom, which is which is quite easy to understand, I think, um, also for not French speakers, because it's a lot also of techni technical uh, points on, on this. So these are two uh, papers. I'm, I'm sure Nicolas Pont will join us uh, soon. We'll probably add some some document from the German speaking world. So so there are a lot of policies already put on paper. My second big question to you is. Um, I, I noticed you are not coming, there is a kind of radicality now on these issues, in your opinion. You are only coming with things we absolutely urgently need to do, and not things we, you know, it's not like gray zone. It's definitely now a white or dark zone. So how can we create acceptance among stakeholders, strategic stakeholders like artists, starting with them, our music directors, like presenters, you know, the, the concert halls, the festivals, the opera houses, managers, um, upon, which, upon which shoulders so much responsibility now lies. I'm not talking um, uh, only about COVID. I'm talking about, you know, um, having um, responsibility upon um, artistic resources, upon uh, uh, people, staff working for them, hundreds, thousands in some cases, while opera house, Metropolitan Opera, Opera National de Paris, these organizations with 1,000 plus staff. You know? Of course, the whole ecosystem, because we have all seen, despite the increasing force of the streaming industry, that we need stage performances to survive. So, so on the top of this, how can we increase the acceptance by these strategic, by these key people to adopt um, voluntary uh, bold measures on the sustainability topics in the very next future. Um, Jasper's article in the Jasper Pirates article in the Guardian was very clear on this, and you can go to HP's website as I did uh, again to mo today morning. They're all figures. It's 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 now. It's not in in okay. It's 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 now. So how can we increase? the acceptance rate of such dramatic changes within our environment. May I start maybe with Céline? As you were um, drafting the sustainability, difficult word for a Frenchman, sorry, um, uh, for correspondence, um, how closely did you work with your music director? How closely did you work with your staff? How closely did you work with the major stakeholders? I mean, uh, touring agencies you may have, uh, residency partners, etc. Um, well, uh, indeed, it, it all started with uh, with the musicians and with the with the permanent staff. Indeed, when we started to um, to um, think and, and reflect on our um, charter, uh, which we launched in two thousand eighteen, um, indeed, we we started from a, a kind of uh, ecological burnout from the point of view of the, of the musician. Uh, as I said, in 2017, it was really the point of no return for correspondent, I, I think, because we uh, we had this um, uh, one-shot uh, date in Boston, then uh, three dates, I uh, remember, uh, in China, uh, three, three, three date uh, um, uh, tour in China. So, uh, and, and it's practically despairing when you tour in China <laughs> from this point of view, because all your sustainable uh, requirements are uh, really uh, negligible for, for uh, all, the, all, all the organizers. Um, but uh, no, it, it started from the in, in it from our team, uh, production team. I put them first uh, because we we really felt a cognitive dissonance in our in our in our in, in the way we uh, organized and produce uh, the, the the concert, and we 
didn't want uh, to to go on like this uh, anymore. It was a real contradiction for us and a, a strong subjective and personal contradiction uh, with the meaning of our um, uh, of our work and uh, and the way we uh, we we produced uh, this uh, this this uh, strong symbolic uh, work. Uh, so um, I I really. Um, I worked uh, very, very closely with the, the musicians and uh, the, the musical director. Uh, it's interesting because indeed our, the, the first charter uh, we, we wrote, uh, we didn't um, um, uh, publish it. Uh, uh, at first, we wanted to see the results uh, first uh, before publishing it. Um, and uh, and um, the musicians uh, were the first ambassadors uh, for this charter. So um, in 2018, I remember um, uh, some French ensemble uh, started to contact me and say, oh, it's interesting. We heard from uh, your charter from a, a musician we share together because we are freelance uh, musician. Uh, so uh, th this is interesting uh, point. And I, I can see we are, of course, not the, the, the uh, alone uh, in this trend, and uh, I see also the, the uh, Orchestra of uh, Age of Enlightenment announced uh, this year, at the beginning of the year, that they won't take any more the plane. And if I'm not wrong, maybe you can correct me, Scott, if, if it's uh, I'm wrong, but uh, the uh, the orchestra uh, as uh, an artistic management committee. Uh, so this is not just a management uh, uh, director and permanent staff that are uh, manage, ma managing the, the, the orchestra. So it comes from the musician too. So this is important because we have the musician, we have the organizations and we have the audience. And uh, in between, we have a chain, a long chain of uh, interdependence. So uh, I'm not saying this is uh, easy, of course. We had a lot of uh, difficulties in our own charter at Cosmonom. That's why we didn't want to publish it and to uh, make a, a, a marketing and <laughs> greenwashing marketing on this charter because uh, it, it's clearly not easy when you have to convince a programmer to pay uh, twice <laughs> the, the price he would have have paid uh, for transportation in train uh, when you uh, are, are re requiring also a two nights hotel because one night is not enough when you are coming by train. Uh, when you come to discuss also exclusivity, I had one uh, really relevant example. I think I, I can I can give and and um, it, it was with uh, Elbe Philharmonie and Berlin uh, Philharmonie at the beginning of the year in January. Uh, we couldn't agree uh, to uh, have uh, two dates in the same week. So we went by train in Berlin, come back by train <laughs> to Paris, and again in uh, Hamburg uh, at uh, one week distance. So this is completely mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you will agree with me. Um, so th this is the kind of example. Uh, it's one example, but I think there are hundreds of examples like this. Uh, so how can we convince programmers uh, to be in a way less competitive because we are talking about competitivity also and it's not because we are a cultural organization that we uh, don't have this uh, kind of uh, of issue so um the my point is now uh, uh to to promote uh, this sustainability uh, criterions as really a positive added value now and i'm also trying to convince the programmers to promote uh, the efforts we are all doing uh, in the um, in the in the programs also in the concert hall programs for the audience uh, we have to publish our carbon footprint of the of a tour when we come uh, to international uh, concert hall and i think this is a strong um um, um Conviction also for 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 the for, for the main argument also for the for, for the audience when they have to choose um, their, uh, their, uh, their 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 concerts and, and and performances. So um, well, it's it's all an ecosystem. We 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 have to change uh, from the musician from the musical direction. It is very difficult for me uh, to say to Sebastian, well, uh, no, you can't have uh, this uh, tenor or uh, this soprano because she's uh, coming from Prague, and I'm doing all this effort to go to Berlin by train. But you will have this uh, soprano coming from Prague uh, with a, 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 a low cost uh, flight. Uh, th this is very difficult when it comes to uh, artistic um, things, but uh it's it's uh, it's 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 going on and also with the musician it's uh, ecological transition uh raises also questions about social progress uh when you have to ask to your musician uh to uh, to to have uh, um, twice longer uh, uh travel uh to berlin by train do you pay them for the traveling days i personally we couldn't afford uh afford to to, to pay for these traveling days so we asked on a on a base of a personal commitment for the musician but it has a strong 
uh, impact uh, on them. So uh, these questions are really uh, interconnected and you can't uh, think sustainability without uh, thinking also uh, social demand and social uh, progress uh, because it's it you, you won't be heard, I think. Um, but so, this, is, this is a chain, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much. If I, if I may summarize, you tell me if I'm partially right, at least. Um, so you, you say that's, that's tough. Let's start with being inclusive. Let's start with talking with the stakeholders and with the ones in your inner circles of musicians, music director. And let's start having first um, good practices all together before communicating on it. So that's how you did it two or three years ago. Um, you say also, well, it's tough because, of course, it, there isn't some over cost. So there, it can be some kind of, that can lead to some kind of or inefficiency. So sustainability um, is more expensive now, at least. So there are two ways to match that, uh, that over cost. The first way is marketing about it. So, um, um, and maybe we are uh, in search here or we should find all together or recommend some kind of green point solutions so like you know these artists are um, doing their very best to become sustainable contrary to some others who are not and the audience can choose then um, and the second point is a personal commitment so it means you bring some kind of of you you bring all together a community an artistic community and make sure they feel better they feel stronger because they behave rightly in some way um more or less that's if i understood you right that's 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 a policy um maybe scott is, is that how how did you do it in, at the at the ensemble or within that group of 25 people of a sustainability mm -hmm. group is that the same kind of strategy you are having like celine or does it uh, is it a little bit different Yeah, I'll, I'll share our story. Um, maybe just before I do that, though, I was struck when Celine said, it's amazing to hear you're doing all this work. At the moment, we're just talking about having these difficult conversations, really. Um, but I, I would say that we have to be more bold. And if musicians have to take twice as long to take these things, I think we need to be bold and find a way that they can be recompensed fairly for that. This is a discussion our groups are having whether that's asking for more from promoters or from the people booking us or from statutory funding. But uh, our members are in agreement that it should not be the individual who bears the brunt of making the right decision financially. I know nobody wants to pay for it at the moment, but I think as organisations, we should really try and lobby for greater access to funds to enable this. But that's just a kind of side point I wanted to make. So our, our journey was very similar to Celine's actually. We also started internally before moving outwards. Uh, as I described, we had this impetus from our funders to begin to do so. And uh, our journey was definitely began with policies for staff to begin with, um, in terms of how the staff would travel, in terms of when we are booking transport, how we'll book it. Individual musicians at the beginning were left to book their own. Um, then once we'd got into a rhythm with, with the staff, we were able to approach it with the board and make sure that a kind of governance level, this is a regularly reviewed topic. And our, keen, our, our goal for our internal work first was to make sure that it became an organizational matter. So it, it often begins that an, an individual who's passionate will begin this change. But what the point we wanted to get to was if all of the individuals who, who were passionate about it left, the organization still have to care about it. And that's where I think policy and board and governance and things can be a good way to ratify these changes that individuals work very hard to make. So we spent a couple of years actually internally building up the data that we had and making these choices. And it just so happened for us that the social shifts we've mentioned uh, meant audiences and our musicians became more aware and began saying to us about the same topics. So I would say on a point of hopefulness now, if you're just beginning this journey, uh, it's it's easier in some ways now than it was because it's a much more mainstreamed issue. So make use of that greater momentum. You don't have to generate it yourself as much now. Um, it's also great to make contacts whenever you can. I think it can sometimes feel like a lonely job trying to make these changes. And so even for me, this conversation is so en enervating to hear Celine talk about her experiences. 
uh, you know, in our building where our office is, we formed a green team with other companies. Uh, there will probably be forums or cultural forums where you can add this to an agenda or a separate meeting. And just on a human level, I think it's really important to come face to face with people who care about these things like you do and draw energy from one another. And uh, maybe just to return to a slightly larger point, Eric, you asked, how are some of the ways that we can convince the people with authority and the pressure on them to begin to make these changes? I think it's a, a mindset shift and to view a crisis as an opportunity and to think cleverly to identify not add an existing uh, add to your existing problems more sets of problems but find clever solutions that can solve two problems at the same time so i gave an example earlier for organizations who wanted to uh, connect more deeply with local communities you know another one could be organizations who want to perform new music or make commitments you can do that and make it about the climate crisis for example uh, so i think it's important to, there are ways where you can achieve multiple goals with one action and in fact, increase efficiency. And I would encourage people to try and think. Did you have also, like that. Celine said, um, some thread of experiences in which you had to tell the musicians, no, that we can't do this as you wanted it to, to, to have it because um, the math again are too, too, too bad. Yeah, it's, it is very difficult to have those conversations. For us, it began locally in Scotland Formerly, we would charter a private coach, you know, a large bus, which is much higher in emissions than taking the train. And often, if you're going to the very rural parts of Scotland, there, there is no direct transport. So journeys will be much longer and probably more boring for people. And as a local example, we had to have those difficult conversations where we said, you know, we really believe that although it's more expensive and it takes longer, this is the right thing to do. And uh, yeah, you, it's a difficult conversation. Some people don't like that. But I would say increasingly people understand it's an important issue. And the more you have those conversations, okay, the easier thanks. they get. So, I Rafi, I think we can only be very admirative of Celine and Scott's efforts on this. Is that scalable? Is it possible to tell, I, I would name anyone, but, you know, the very famous um, music director of a US American orchestra that the tour has to last three weeks and not one half. It has to go to average venues and not only first ones because it needs to be in some way environmental, sustainable. Um, is it possible to convince a soloist to go by train from Paris to Berlin and come back and go five days later to Hamburg also by train? Um, all the, is is all of this, which is a daily business of classical music, where 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 there is value, where we are you know um, acting as a as a major cultural factor? Is it possible to imagine that in a very few years uh, period that will be common practice? Yeah, um, to, uh, well, uh, to start with, there is a lot of people that are already doing it just like um, Celine and Scott's organization and many individual artists that really care about this. Um, there, there is already many examples of it and there are many local uh, examples in Scandinavia as well that is uh, some orchestras actually do not uh, book um, artists that don't come by train or, or vice versa. <clears throat> So we are already seeing that quite a lot. In terms of uh, scalability, uh, in ter uh, the question is, can uh, instead of one and a half weeks, can we do it three weeks? I think that um, is not an easy thing to do, uh, but I think the mindset has to change in the sense of when one is traveling to somewhere, why are we going there? What are we going to do there? How are we engaged with the local community? So the days of just going to one city to the next and to the next one after the other without really engaging with the local um, public uh, in detail, I think that um, that model in the long term, also with the effects of climate change, has to change and must change. And so when we are building up repertoires or programs or discussing with promoters, we have to think about how we can um, make one journey count more 
if you like. And, uh, and so that, that can involve a lot of different things. Um, that could be from, um, from residencies to, uh, to engagement with local educational bodies to, uh, to master classes or whatever. It can be so many different things. Um, and it's not necessarily has to be in, uh, in regular venues either. Um, there's just so many spaces. I know, for example, Scottish Ensemble does a lot of things outside of the venues as well. And so we have to think more creatively about that. And, um, and I mean, the, the one thing that one very practical thing that one could do is that for each travel, the assessment of the carbon footprint you're doing. I think we can all do that. And how much would it cost to offset that and then include that in our budgets, for example, from the get go? And that already is a maybe uh, may, maybe cutting rather than cutting cost in the carbon offsetting, you can do it in uh, cutting costs in other means or putting a part of your funding into that. So um, so there, there is that practical. But actually, I should make sure that carbon offsetting is not only one thing. We have to be carbon well, carbon neutral or carbon offset. It's carbon. We have to strive to become carbon negative. Actually. And, uh, and uh, that's something, all these ideas is something that we have to share together. I mean, you know, when we were, um, uh, many studies have been made about the public, because we're doing a concert, lots of public is coming and they are polluting the world for coming to the concert. And how do we balance that, if you like? And so, um, so we have to really reassess our values. But I do not think that the old model of, let's say instead of one and a half weeks and spread it to three weeks, there is not, it's not realistic, I don't think. It's just the mindset has to change. How we so, build projects. I Thank you. And, and, and again, same question again. Uh, do you have in mind some anecdote or some living experience in which you had um, practically to negotiate with a client um, uh, an adjustment into the touring plan or schedule or you know because you knew that would be unsustainable and and you had to make it understand from from your client and maybe from a very very major figure in the classical music i mean yeah, like a I major production the, the, on an individual artist level it, there are numerous uh, numerous anecdotes. Many artists right now, like for example, they do not, they, uh, they decide to just travel in Europe by train and actually we're scheduling their concerts according to that, for example. And uh, some artists, for example, are traveling uh, less uh, trans, well, long haul flights, for example, they're deciding to do only one long haul per year or two long hauls per year. So then those times that they, uh, they, they select are very precious. So we've tried to find the best opportunity for those, um, for those uh, uh, opportunities. So actually uh, it's more and more uh, possible uh, things that are happening on the individual level. In the, uh, in the more institutional level, I think there has been, um, there has been uh, many, um, uh, cases where people want to travel by train, they're trying to arrange like very specific thing is that we're trying to build more linear touring, if you like that, you know, that the journeys are much easier. Sometimes it's not easy, but uh, we're trying to convince promoter to change their dates according to that. So it's kind of the mindset from the very beginning in the past, actually, uh, when I first started, it was zigzagging all the time and now it's less but i want to go back to a very important point is that uh, the travel is one part of it there is just so much elements to this that um when you look at it you know the travel is not the biggest polluter actually when you go to the venue like as scott was saying about the um uh, the energy usage how what energy are being used so perhaps uh, in the long term um there could be like a list of um um, kind of green venues and maybe artists big artists can choose to uh, many artists can choose to decide their tour based on that green element that's a fantastical idea perhaps but perhaps that will be more important than the prestige element that we should be going to this to help the planet I mean that's a very um, so another thought no, really. I, I can only uh, recommend our listeners to go to the uh, Arvivas white paper where there is a broad description of how hotels and accommodation should look like 
for instance, that's pretty interesting. And if we had the right to disclose some tech writers, uh, we may become from some famous classical music artists, uh, eight pages with a description of the flowers and and maturity of fruits and etc., which we all know there we have in our industry. I won't disclose any name um, here, but okay, we would that 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 would be matter of 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 reflection for sure for many of us. Um, may I may I come to a, a, a third and final layer? Um, um, that would be very much continental European. You will see, guys. Uh, um, um, public policy. How can it help? Uh, Celine is also vice president of Profedim. I mentioned it. Profedim is has been always from the very beginning, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, um, a very active part of French public policy. Very influential and 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 very inspiring, I must say, uh, uh, from a personal experience. And it it is now in 21 after Europe on a whole, let's say Northern Europe on a whole, German speaking countries, Dutch speaking countries, French speaking countries have been, um, let's say supporting quite well their artists. Um, but let's say um, on, a, on a business as usual basis, more or less, and not trying to nudge uh, practices in some way or the other. We, I know um, that that team has been quite active in the in in another way, trying also to to qualify that support and find ways to change things. So maybe let's have that common discussion. I know in the UK, fortunately or unfortunately, the public support is a little bit less than it is in 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 France or in 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 Germany and in the world as a global as a planet. It is even less than in the UK. So the, the, the European model, continental European model, is it's quite an extension. But maybe it is also a good model to watch. So my question, very simple, is what do you expect from the um, democratic elected governments, local governments, national governments, to do in that matter? They have built, or they are still building, um, uh, concert halls in the last 20, 30 years. With great success. They have been educating people, not enough, but still supporting music schools, etc., etc. But now maybe in the 2020s, we are um, asking from them something else, something quite different. So how can they help? Concretely, what kind of support do you would you wish to become? If you were the policymaker, what would you do in 2021? Well, I can say we expect a lot uh, from the, the, the public policies. Indeed, our, all our, the, the efforts we're uh, talking about, they are useless if uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, discussed at a, at a uh, political and, and public uh, level. Um, unfortunately, I'm speaking for France, uh, we have just a strategy from the uh, Ministry of Culture. Uh, a strategy is not complete, compelling, so it's it's not clearly not enough. And it's part of our work at uh, Arviva, it's uh, to, to, to do active lobbying uh, on, on public policies, uh, on, um, on um, uh, people uh, in charge of, of cultural uh, policies. Uh, it's starting slightly to move, but uh, I, I can't say uh, it's enough. Uh, we are so late uh, on this on this topic, so um, the, 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 there is a lot to do. Um, but clearly, we we need some uh, more compelling laws uh, on this on this uh, on this subject. And I think, uh, well, we, we you mentioned Eric the, the 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 important support and financial support we get from ministry. So I guess this support can also be. Um, uh, a way uh, of uh, introducing good ideas because, because when you have support you have to um, uh, to to apply to a lot of uh, forms of things uh, and I'm really surprised that uh, now when uh, I'm uh, applying for um, uh, ministry uh, calls for project or uh, for uh, city or uh, region uh, calls for project uh, I'm not really asked um, uh, by them uh, w w what I'm really doing uh, on this environmental uh, uh, issue. Uh, so I think we 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 have. Uh, so it, it's always the debate between um, uh, 
uh, how do I say that in English? Um, um, malus and bonus. Uh, sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't know if it is the the right term in uh, English too. Uh, well, it's kind of positive, positive or, yeah. or negative enforcement. Yeah. So you get plus points or minus yes. points depending on the way you behave. So uh, it, it is uh, the eternal uh, d debate. Uh, do we have to encourage uh, first and, and, and do not uh, uh, go through um, minus uh, points when you when, when you don't do nothing? Uh, I was surprised uh, to hear the minister, the cultural minister, um, uh, two months ago uh, talking about this kind of policy, minus or plus or bonus, uh, uh, if you if you are uh, active in this uh, in this field. So I, I guess it's it's moving, but clearly not uh, not not enough. And and uh, so at Arviva, we are really trying to meet every responsible uh, in charge of, of this cultural policies to uh, raise awareness, to uh, give example. Uh, we are really promoting this guide for action. We, um, we've built uh, together with the, the other eight uh, co-founders of uh, Arviva and with uh, all the good suggestions uh, we, we get uh, from all the, prof the professional uh, of the uh, of performing arts. And we are trying to, to from this guide for action um, to to give uh, simple ideas. Maybe that there are sometimes simple. They are also more complex sometimes. But uh, we 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 have to get a really incentive uh, uh, policy uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 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 all cultural uh, field. Great. So we have to welcome Nic Nicolaus Pont, the head of uh, Bayerische Rundfunk Symphony Orchestra. Um, Nicolas, I already introduced you at the very beginning. We are in the middle of discussion. I will give you the word right now. We're talking about uh, how the policymakers can influence sustainable policy. Let me maybe summarize under your control, um, guys. Um, we all agree that we have to change a little bit mindset, not thinking there is a linear connection between reputation and being very active in international venues. We can also be locally successful. We were thinking we have to change the mass and geometry of the way we are touring. And, and, and Rafi has a lot of ideas about this, even if he has a major responsibility on his shoulders about international touring. And we were also uh, describing kind of metrics we may, we may follow of this and talking about um, uh, negative externalities we have now to, to put into our budgets. Again, Rafi, no, sorry, Rafi, I'm not, but Rafi was proposing that we could include into our budgets um, the way to offset the uh, carbon uh, footprint uh, costs implied into, into a touring and, and maybe even aim at being carbon negative. So having an industry participating to uh, uh, um, an improving of the of the uh, uh, situation of the, of the ecological situation of the planet, um, and we were also stressing uh, that come also, also from Rafi the fact that we are a massive media with a huge influence, and that's for sure in 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 Munich with your orchestra among among others. So we came to the point since we are more or less agreeing on a couple of things. How can we get some help about this? And I was stressing the fact that on the continent, there has been massive help in German-speaking countries, but also in Dutch-speaking countries, also in French-speaking countries, at least not so much in the UK, but at least there has been some help for artists, also independent artists. But that help had not been conditioned a lot, if I'm rightly informed, on a kind of sane and sound environmental policy. So how can we change it? In 21. So maybe the word up to you, Nicolas. A short description of when sustainability has become an issue for the BR Symphony Orchestra. Uh, what you did, and uh, what which help do you expect from the radio, from the federal government on these issues in 21? Thank you very much, Eric. Um, thank you very much for the invitation to join you um, here on Friday lunchtime. Um, I'm really sorry I couldn't um, take part any earlier, but I'm actually in a um, team workshop with my management team, um, which um, was um, scheduled for yesterday and today, um, quite some time ago, we, because we wanted to use the time of, you know, limited uh, possibilities for the orchestra to work um, in order to do something which we had been wanting to do for a long time. Um, when does a management team have time to get together for two days and talk about issues that is relevant to everybody? Um, so that's the reason I'm late and I can only join you for, you know, a little bit more than half an hour because um, as a boss, it would be very weird to 
leave out on that workshop. Um, I think most issues will be addressed towards me anyway, probably. Um, but um, th th this is, of course, um, you know, a huge subject to talk about, um, um, as you probably saw in your exchange already, um, with a lot of aspects that you already um, um, mentioned in your summary, Eric. Um, to go straight back to your questions, um, what's our situation and how is it in a sort of um, environment of a public broadcaster? Um, when did we start to think about it? The Symphony Orchestra des Bayerischen Rundfunks is, is, is sort of an interesting specimen because um, I think we do regard ourselves, and um, it's for other people, of course, to to say whether that's justified or not. To you know, not be one of the radio orchestras in Germany, the Symphony Orchestra des Bayerischen Rundfunks, um, you know, sees its peers probably more with um, you know the the sort of most famous orchestras in the world. Um, that's that's um, where we um, sort of see ourselves and, and, and these are the ensembles we compare ourselves. Why am I pointing this out? Because as we all know, the, the, um, there's sort of a, there has been a competition um, in terms of international presence of top orchestras. Um, um, the image of an orchestra was defined by um, how success, successful were your regular Asian Japanese um, um, or uh, North American tours. I'm talking from a European point of view right now, as you um, um, uh, immediately thought. Um, and um, and therefore, if you if you were successful with your tours with um, um, headed by your chief conductor, um, this is a sort of proof of your position. And this is something that um, that, of course, has been important and i think it might still be important in the future um but perhaps not as much as it used to um i'll get back to that in a second when did the orchestra start to think about um these issues when did the management start to think about these issues for the first time well obviously there are um, a lot of individuals and 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 um, um they have different attitudes to the whole environmental uh, um, uh, themes that are being discussed. Um, in terms of a sort of institutional um, discussion, or at least the group discussions in, in orchestra versammlung and you know orchestra meetings and and in ex exchange with the management, I think it's it's become a regular subject. Probably only about three or four years ago, not much longer than that, to be honest. Um, perhaps because there were other issues that were regarded um, more important um, but um, but but perhaps also by by just not not knowing how to um, you know bring individual thoughts about all these things into um, an, an orchestral context um, and in these three or four years um, the subject has become obviously stronger and um, has taken up more time um, has generated many more discussions um corona and i'm sure that that had has been subject of your discussion as well has it somehow um at least it feels like that speeding up this process actually um um with uh, you know all the uncertainties about travel and cargo businesses in the future what do we know about environmental uh, about business um, effects um in the future what you know what what will be the the, the prices for flying orchestra and the whole orchestra cargo um over a, 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 um, an ocean um we we I guess we don't know exactly yet. That will be will be something to 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 find out. Of course, that has effects on the on the planning of tours that will that are supposed to happen in the next two or three years. I don't know what's your experience, but um, we have problems in making decisions on big tours at the moment um, um, with a lot of things that we that we don't don't know. Um, I think within the orchestra, there are still a lot of people who say, well, you know, it's important for us to be out there and it's important for us to show that we are, you know, in the in the big metropolises of, of, of the musical world um, and with the most important promoters and in the most famous halls. Um, but there's a growing number of musicians who are actually coming, who come forward and say, you know, not at any price or not at every price. Um, I think... Today, for me as a manager, it would be impossible um, to schedule and explain something that happened only 
two years ago, which was a trip to New York for two Carnegie Hall evenings um, as a sort of one-off trip over the Atlantic. Um, that wasn't the initial plan, to be honest. We know it was it was it was us uh, talking about a, an extended um, North American tour, which and Rafi probably knows what I'm talking about, um, and 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 um, everybody else too, um, sort of fell through on economic uh, for economic reasons, um, doing a. Um, um, a tour that breaks even in North America is a is a tricky um, challenge. Um, we all know that, um, especially when when you want to go to the interesting places and not um, go to um, all the also interesting but perhaps not as representative um, university campuses, um, the ones that have money to pay orchestras. Um, so eventually, we ended up doing only these two concerts in Carnegie Hall and. Um, at the time when it happened, I already felt really bad about that. I mean, it, that, that's that's crazy. That is just not to be explained, um, actually, and and can't be justified. So we certainly wouldn't wouldn't do something like that. Leave alone, plan something like that. Um, and um, that probably brings me to the way we are. Um, well, we are we're thinking about uh, 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 touring um, and our. Um, um, uh, carbon monoxide output in the future. I think if we go somewhere, if we travel long ways, or also shorter ways, actually, I think um, our aim will be to to leave to have more relevance to the places that we go to, um, which means staying there for longer, not only doing the the, the, the traditional. Um, two evening concerts um, with um, big name conductor and soloists, um, but actually offer something else, um, whether it's in the educational field, whether it's um, chamber music. Um, that's something that, as you notice by me not being able to give you a list of, of, of 50 things that can be done, this, these plans are not finalized or, or, or um, um, uh, specified enough and uh, this is something that's definitely a task that that um, we will we will uh, have to face um, i.e what does more relevance to the places we go to mean what could it mean that needs a lot of discussions with promoters um, um, it needs um, you know a sort of discussion about what do places need some places need other and more things than um, perhaps um, the ones that have very active orchestras um, themselves. Um, so, you know, it's perhaps a little bit naive to say the Symphony Orchestra des Bayerischen Rundfunks goes to New York and New York is only waiting to um, to to um, a place or the Carnegie Hall is only waiting for, uh, to place uh, the educational um, um, offers that we might have um, because um, there's nothing else going on. Um, so it's not working like this. Um, uh, so I think that's that's how I see us, and that's how I see the challenges that we face that we probably share with a lot of um, with a lot of places. And and finally, um, uh, responding to your question about the institution around us, the people who finance or the institution that finances the orchestra, that's a that's an interesting one, and in a way, that's a funny one too because um, I, I I started to bring up. Um, uh, orchestral related subjects and questions um uh, you know with regard to uh, environmental issues um to my bosses to the directors and the intendant of the and the, and the board of the bavarian radio um and um one of these questions was could you please give us an advice how to um act when it comes to a concert in cologne which is a 4 hours train ride from munich um but since we have to look after the um, careful spending of public license payers' money, and we can actually fly to Cologne um, for that concert um, and save about 10,000 euros by flying rather than taking the train, um, what has the, what, what's the priority um, from 
the Bayerische Rundfunk's point of view. Uh, but, or in other words, um, what, what is, you know, what, what do I have to make, base my decisions on? Is it, um, is it an economic thing or is it, is it a sort of a faith and an environmental um, um, priority that, that I should um, oblige to? Um, and up until now, I haven't really got a clear answer to that question. It seems that at least the Bavarian radio and um, immediately protecting my 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 um, employer. I don't think it's the only institution, the only official institution, publicly funded institution in Germany with that sort of problem. I think on an institutional level, um, we, 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 we can't find a clear, um, um, uh, you know, prior, prioritization um, in, in that context. And that's very disappointing. And that's something that we have to press in, in whatever field we are working. So I think I, I covered most of the questions that you put to me and I hope um, it wasn't too boring because you'd actually talked about all these things before anyway. Well, great, it was great, great. Well, thanks, great testimony. And you, we all agree on the fact that there is a pricing problem in the, we are the typical economic uh, misattribution of costs. And, and of course you are facing that when you are comparing prices which are not including the right costs, but we, 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 this, this may be changing very, very soon. Um, maybe Rafi, you, you, you mentioned the fact that Harrison Powell was thinking at, at opening up or is already doing kind of consultancy on these kind of issues. I have the feeling uh, that's also what Celine said about public policy. We, we need, we need data. We need uh, having the right data now. And maybe you have compiled such, or is there any hope? That we may be having that kind of discussion in six months' time or twelve months' time with a little bit more, you know, um, hard facts. Um, actually, data is very, very important. And uh, when you speak about public uh, organizations, it's important to prove it uh, uh, just with hard facts and data. And I think we, uh, there are many organizations that are out there that are specifically, um, um, specifically uh, can do that research for you. And, it's, and in fact, it's not very expensive. Uh, we thought that it might be very expensive to do that research, but actually it's not. Uh, and it's a very worthwhile thing. Uh, we used uh, a company called Footprints, but there are many, many organizations out there in Germany and France. Um, so, um, so I think that the data is number one in order to, um, to convince, uh, the public bodies, if you like. Um, and as this, uh, subject will grow in importance, uh, the public will demand that. And in terms of, uh, when, when they ask you, um, when they ask you whether to fly to Cologne or not, uh, you will have the public behind you that you shouldn't fly to Cologne. And through this, um, so I think that uh, yeah, definitely. Does that answer definitely. Your question, Eric? I don't know Scott or Celine if you want to react to Nikolaus' uh, great, great uh, history and very short one. Three to four years ago, it was only a question of some individuals taking care of this, and now this is a corporate issue. Um, that was pretty much a time span. Also, also you were describing Scott and Celine. Um, I don't know if you want to react as a, as a conclusive word. Uh, Celine has got two to leave us in three minutes. And we will, we will all live at, at, at 1 p.m. Berlin, Paris time, to, and 12 in, in, in noon in London. Okay. Just speak briefly, maybe Eric, and I'll leave some time for Celine. Hi, Nicholas, it's great to hear from your experiences. Just quickly about what I would ask from public bodies, funding orchestras. Scotland is quite lucky in that the government has some of the most ambitious climate change goals in the world, more so even than the UK. Uh, Scotland is pledged to be net zero by 2045 and Glasgow and Edinburgh, Glasgow where I'm based by 2030. So that's only 10 years to make these changes. Uh, I think anyone in receipt of public funds should at the bare minimum have to work out what their carbon footprint is and be obliged to make a plan to reduce it. Uh, I also think funders should be lobbied about the fact that slow travel is more expensive as we've just heard. And it may be the case that they come to expect fewer engagements from organizations they fund, but engagements that go more deeply and that can travel more slowly. And lastly, I think it's important that we, we lobby for broader social change, things like 
renewable electricity, decarbonizing the national grid. These are services not only orchestras make use of, but all individuals and halls. Reforming public transport as well is a huge one. It'll benefit orchestras, but also audiences as they come and see us. So those are just some of the immediate demands that I think we should boldly request. All of this can be very influenced by the next weekend's decision if we have a commercial deal or not between the United Kingdom and the European Union. Um, Céline, maybe a very short final word before you're leaving us. Um, well, no, a, a lot of, uh, has been said already. I, I was wondering before leaving if there are some questions from the, the audience, because unfortunately I, I, I have to leave you in a few I minutes. Have, but, I have um, some. Um, though, uh, someone is, um, Sabrina is asking for figures. We've just talked about that, hard facts and data, and as you said, Rafi, indeed. Uh, that's, that's clear. Boards, public founders, private sponsors, audiences, like they will be looking for figures um, uh, very short term, probably. Um, I have another question. If big artist doesn't travel, but then the fans travel to see the big artists, <laughs> wouldn't be counterproductive as it creates more travel pollution. Uh, I had many times, thanks for that, for that question, uh, I have many times in my mind the uh, articulation between uh, streaming and um, the energy we are also spending at this uh, and, and touring and how, as Nicolaus was also mentioning, the fact that now it has to be more relevant to the communities it goes. It would be also such a waste not having relevance from the Bayerischen uh, Rundfunk Symphony Orchestra throughout the world. So in some way we need, at the same time, it has to focus on, on some places. It has also to use or maximize the capacity to use all the new technological tools we will have uh, in the future. And we already have, but the 5G will change it also completely and accelerate it also a little bit more than we know already. Uh, to make also the fantastic musicianship, artistship, um, art artistic skills of the Bayerischen Rundfunk Symphony Orchestra and its colleagues available to the wider people, wider audience possible. So, but that's another discussion. Um, does anyone of please, Rafi, yeah. Um, Celine, did you want to say something? Uh, just maybe just one thing. Uh, but but yeah, the, someone asked for the the, the, the streaming uh, issue, and of course at Arviva we we are trying to adopt a large um, a point of view uh, for sustainability. So we had uh, we listed. Ten topics, and uh, of course, there is the, the digital uh, question. Uh, there is also the sponsorship um, question, the communication, marketing, PR. So it is very when you come to sustainability, it's it's uh, indeed um, well. Of course, touring is just a really really small part uh, of the of the question, um, and it's very very hard to review all our practices and all our organization from this point of view. So I think it it really raises the question, a uh, global question of uh, at um, of how um, uh, how far can we go in resilience and rebuilding uh, differently uh, our organization after after the crisis? It of course uh, it it urges us to 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 in, uh, to uh, ask ourselves the good questions uh, uh, about how we finance uh, our our field, uh, how we organize uh, or or our production, how we communicate with the with, with the audience, and and there are a lot of uh, uh, wrong good ideas in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this sustainability uh, matter. But I, I think it really. Um, uh, yes, it, it it really interrogates us on the point of uh, how far can we can can we be resilient uh, and resilient? I think it's a positive value after the crisis to 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 be pushed uh, and and to be pushed also uh, towards the, the the public policy uh, and 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 we we have to ask ourselves this uh, this uh, uh, we have to review all our organization from all this uh, this uh, urgent urgent matters and, and, and issues. Thanks, um, Rafi. Um, yeah, I just, I just, oh, yeah. just, uh, uh, just a, uh, well, sorry, I, I have to, to leave. So thank you very much for the invitation uh, and all this uh, rich and, and really passionate um, discussion. Thank you. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. right. Ciao, Zeline. Thank you. Just, um, uh, just because we have very few minutes left, I just wanted to um, add that the uh, way of building artists, orchestras, brands, 
um, is changing. And I think this pandemic has, in some ways, has that brought that opportunity that the relationship between an artist and the public doesn't need to be in a, just a venue, for example, or when you travel. There are so many added values that you can do. I mean, we just uh, launched, for example, our virtual circle, which is a uh, which is a digital channel so that we wanted to uh, reach out to as many public as possible directly. Um, and, um, and the digital side is one thing, but there is, uh, we don't know where the virtual reality will go to, where all the technical uh, uh, um, technology will grow into. And so I think we always have to look out to, um, we should change our mindset in terms of that we can build um, our audiences in different matters. I mean, one another very practical thing, we are now transporting concepts, ideas to local orchestras. So, so the, uh, the local institutions can be a laboratory to creating ideas, which can then be um, uh, offered to other organizations or partner organizations all throughout the world. So their idea can travel without them traveling and uh, the audiences can create similar experiences perhaps. So there's just so many different ideas now that we can think creatively and not think just touring. But I think in the end of the day, the idea and the experience is that what matters, right? Great. Personally, I, see, I, know, I prefer live music always. Nah, yeah, we do, we do. We do. I see, I see uh, Francois has swapped uh, parrots for a, a white uh, brick wall. So that means also if when we all know when we see Francois, that means this is the end of discussion, unfortunately. But this is really it was such an honor, such a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much, all of you, um, to have joined. Um, uh, word to to Francois, I'm sure a lot of topics we've discussed will be part of our uh, discussions in 2021 in that in that same framework. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. thank you. Thank you also from me uh, to, to all of you for this amazing discussion. It's more than food for thoughts, it's food for action. And uh, so now um, you can share this content. I think it would be great for many people to be inspired by all your discussions. So uh, it's available. It, it will stay available on YouTube um, for, for a few months. So. Uh, Thank you. Have a great end of the year and we'll see you again in 2021. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.